Welcome to the Smart Board Revolution Global Virtual User Group Special Edition Smart Survival Guide Using the Gallery tab. And I'm your host, Matt Granger. When you open Smart Notebook, you have these tabs over here on the side. Right. First one is your page sorter. It's where you work with your pages. Second one is the gallery tab where you have pre populated graphic items that smart provides with the install this is the attachments tab we'll talk about that later but those are things that you can attach to the lesson so you have easy access to them here's the properties tab that changes the properties also as you pick up or as you select tools this area, these are also properties, and these are. This is also a quick way of changing what the tool properties are. But there are more properties located in the properties tab. The next one is the activity builder. So here in the activity builder, uh, that'll be a separate video showing us how to use that. But that is where you build and create the activities. And then finally at the bottom, if you have Smart Response installed, that's your response tab. So today we are going to focus here on the gallery tab. What's in the gallery and how does that work? So when I click on that, it's going to expand here. Now here is an important, down at the bottom left, it's going to show up about right there when I hit the tab again this auto hide okay now you see that it resized the window and when I click out into the workspace it doesn't go away the tab doesn't go away so rule of thumb for me when I'm creating a lesson and using the gallery I'm gonna turn off the auto hide then when I go to present it I want to turn that back on so I'm gonna turn the auto hide off Currently, this is what it should look like. Everyone should have probably from the Google 3D warehouse up to the My Content. And coming will be this Gallery 2.0, and it'll be organized and it'll work a little bit different. Not saying that it'll be different content, it'll just be organized and you'll interact with it differently. So when I click on that Gallery Essentials down here, here you'll see there are 6,705 items and I have four different categories pictures interactive and multimedia notebook files and pages backgrounds and themes and then the number after them shows how many of how many files are in that so if I'm looking specifically for pictures when I click that here are all 5,000 5,000 of them interactive and multimedia I'm not sure why there wasn't a number there but here they are Okay, so now, I mean, this is interactive and multimedia just because when Above. I click on there, it plays whatever sound has been attached to it. It also has some flash files, so these with the red F on them, it's a flash file of some kind. Construct the perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB. Label it AB. Draw a line segment. So if you do have pull out a flash item like this, to move it, you have to grab that blue bar up at the top. Notebook files and pages. These are complete. They're background. And you'll notice that the top right corner is folded over on those. That's what tells you that it's... Uh, a background so yeah, none of these can be selected it covered everything else that was on the page so it is a background that you can then put other things on top of but see if I oh I've got those bees now let me put the bees wings on there it doesn't add those graphics that's the actual background now of the page and it covered up the other one okay so those are your backgrounds 
So you got maps and letters and fractions and handwriting stuff. Right? So you can put those up as a background that then you can do other things on top of and add to it. So that's notebook files and pages and then backgrounds and themes. I guess I was not using the word background very effectively even though this is now a background but I drag this one out and notice that this one is folded over in the bottom right so this what they're calling the backgrounds here in this more of like a page template similar to in PowerPoint where you want this to be on every page so you could create a theme from this which is a whole nother lesson whole nother video as well so clicking on the folder this is a Mac so it has the triangles on a PC it has the plus to show that there's more folders inside so you've got your separate folders and subfolders how it's all organized now anything that's in the gallery you cannot delete so if you select any one of these things right, delete is not an option you can't get rid of it lesson activity toolkit is a separate part of your gallery and it has these activities examples games graphics pages and tools these are things to help you build better lesson for example the pages you're gonna create a lesson keeping things consistent is best practice right let's not have the background changing colors and all kinds of things let's keep the look kinda of consistent it just makes them you know, professional looking it makes them look good so here in the lesson pages blank you've got six pages blue brown green orange purple and teal so you can edit put your content in here you notice it's got you know a nice border and everything so every time you use one of these pages and drag one of these out it's gonna look the same so let's say hey we we're gonna do a category sort I want a category sort page look a blue brown green orange purple and teal right so if I created a new page and if I'm using the orange for this lesson file, now I can bring out this category sort page in orange as well. So it's pre-built. So you've got several fill in the blank, instructions, keyword match, keyword pad, questions, ranking, sentence range, statement, target, Venn diagram. So those are the lesson pages. All right, smart response pages. If you're putting in a multiple choice question, and look there's that number six again why because you've got the same page in six different colors so now on my next page if I'm gonna put in a smart response question there it is so just double click you can edit the text edit the answer what if you don't have smart response but you still want to use this question you can because then the smart response question will be in there for future if you do get response or you can still you know ask the questions for formative assessment uh, without using the smart response um, or if you have I know blasphemous for me to say but if you have a different kind of clicker or use some online poll anywhere or something like that right, you can still put the questions in here using these pages and since I'm keeping it all orange, right, it's going to look nice. And then you can also, there are title pages. Now there are 12 here, and that's because you have two versions. One with flash, and one that are just linked. The pages are linked. So the one with flash uh, over here, it's a single page. This one, it's got the little binder on it because it's a couple of different pages, and there are links to take you instead of dragging one page out there I actually added two pages I have this page for the lesson objectives and the title and then when I click that it actually linked to a separate page where I can add some notes and all the information for it and these are great if you're creating a lesson it's great to use these title pages because then it's easy to share 
it helps you to remember certain things. Games, activities, examples. These are great activity examples. So the anagram. So these are, most of these are like flash files that you can get, but you're thinking, okay, well, how, how would I use it? Or here's one that I can pull out and then edit. So I want this category sort using text. Now notice that it's green. Uh, I don't want green. These are just the examples, right? Oh, here's my an uh, category sort. See? There, oh, there are my six. Here's my orange. So I'm going to add a new page as I build this lesson. So I double click it and the flash file comes in. Now I can go up here, click edit. So Lesson Activity Toolkit is a one of the best features in the gallery, but it's one that people don't use as often as they should. New in Notebook 11 is the Lesson Activity examples. So those would be the ones that you would build here with the Activity Builder. Uh, other interactive techniques. So there are 10 here that show other ways to interact and have students interact. Um, so as you're learning how to build lessons, this is a good place to look. And then 3D objects, if you have the 3D tools installed or you have one of the 3D enabled cameras, document cameras, they have those there. So here I am building this lesson, or I'm up here at the board and I need to quickly find something that I want to throw in there so I can type a search term right? you just click in there then you can use the onboard keyboard if you wish pushing the keyboard button Make sure that that's highlighted and then hundred chart two items Is that all related folders notebook files and pages so place value there are six pictures there are Seven notebook files and pages. I've heard that there's a, like an interactive hundred charts. It's really cool, but how come that didn't show up? I did hundred charts. If I just go back and call it hundred. Oh, I've got some more there. And I know that it's like an interactive one, so I'm going to look here in my interactive and multimedia. Oh, there it is. Hundred square uh, but I called it hundred chart well let me show you what you can do there it is drag it out it's a flash file I have this hundred square but I like calling it a hundred chart so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it into my content and drop it so it's gonna show up here in the interactive and multimedia See, I've done this several times and I haven't ever cleaned it out. But So I can click on it now and I can go down and edit the property. 100, grid, math. These are the keywords that they put in. But notice there's no 100 chart. I want 100 chart because then that's what I think of. That's what I call it. So whenever I go to search, that's what's going to come to my mind. So I can add... chart here. I can also come up here and actually rename it if I want, which is going to help when I do a search. Let's see if we can find it now. 100 chart. Oh look, interactive and multimedia. There it is. Okay. So just because the gallery calls it one thing doesn't mean that you can't change it. You can't change it, however, in the gallery. It has to be in my content before you can actually change it. You're searching, you want to find something. It's a simple search. You want a boy, picture of a boy. All right, so pictures. Oh, here we got some. Here's this guy. So put it up here. Notice that once it's out here, the properties brings up the properties tab, not the same properties box from here and notice see I can't change it because it's actually from the gallery and not in my content so that's how you search for find things the gallery essentials 
and sometimes if that's not properly loaded when you click there might be like a gallery sampler with like 200 items you'll know that you have the whole thing when you look and there's over 6,000 items when you click the gallery essentials. Join us for our monthly Spurgvug meetings around the first of each month. Uh, you find more information, the schedule, links to previous recordings at smartboardrevolution.ning.com. This is Matt Granger, your host for the Smart Survival Guides.